Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Professor Gavala and today I'm going to be talking to you about operational amplifiers or op amps. And essentially op amps were first realized in 1968 and they're used essentially to amplify signals, um, add or subtract and or multiply signals or even things like do things like derivatives or uh, integration. Uh, we can also do things like digital to analog converters using op amps and much more. And essentially they consist of many interconnect transistors, diodes, resistors, and capacitors all fabricated on an, uh, a chip of silicon. And as you see in this image to your right, this is my input one, or let's call this input uh, at three. This is another input at two. This here is my output at six. This is my seven at V plus, and this is my four at V minus. And essentially, and this is five and six and five and one, but again, don't worry too much about these. But essentially, it's a buildup of these transistors or BJTs, resistors, capacitors, and many more things embedded into a single chip that looks like this in the physical world or in a pen diagram looks like this where we label our pin 7 as plus VCC, our V6 as VO, our V4 as minus VCC, our V3 as VP or V positive going into the positive terminal and our V2 as V negative going into the negative terminal or VN. In terms of the complete circuit diagram, essentially this is pin three, this is pin two, this is pin four here and it's connected to a negative power supply. So this is VCC, but again, remember, this uh, is the positive and this is the negative. And here is pin seven where this is the positive and this is the negative VCC. And this is pin six here. Again, for pin one, five and eight, don't worry too much about those when you consider working with an operational amplifier. In general, how we want to model this thing is with an equivalent circuit. And again, if you want to know more about equivalent circuits, please check out my Circuits 1 playlist, Lecture 3. But essentially, we want to model this like an equivalent circuit that looks like a huge resistance coming in, Ri, and a voltage controlled voltage source and an output resistance RO, which is very small. And essentially, this has a triangle around it, and that is the op amp, where this is VP and VN, and the current going into here from VP or IP is basically zero since this RI is very, is very, very big. We almost call it infinity, and current cannot flow through a resistor that is at infinite resistance. And here, IN is also equal to zero for the same reason. And if we take a multimeter and we, we probe here and here, we could say that this is VP minus VN, where this is our V input. And this voltage controlled voltage source or VV, a uh, voltage controlled voltage source VCVS is a huge gain A times VP minus VN 
or this is also equals to A times V in. And again, this RO is very, very close to zero ohms. And now we have our V out, which has an IO coming to it. But the idea is that if we apply a small voltage, VP minus VN here, we want to then amplify it by this gain A, okay, where this gain is around 10 to the 8, or we call this infinity. And then your V out will be equals to A times V in, or um, we consider that A is equals to V out over V in. So to be clear, when you're modeling an ideal op amp, again, these are constraints we put on an op amp in order to make analysis easier. If you have an op amp that has a non-inverting and an inverting, again, non-inverting is the plus and inverting is the minus, and it goes to an output VO, where this is V P and VN, we consider some certain, uh, a couple constraints. Uh, this is plus VCC, and this is minus VCC. And the constraints we consider are IP is equals to IN is equals to zero, where this is IN, this is IP, VP is extremely similar to VN, so it's a very small, they're very small signals. So VP could be um, around 0.1 and VN could be around negative 0.1, all right? But we consider that these two are extremely similar. We consider a gain equals to infinity we consider an R equivalent, uh, sorry, an R input of infinity and an R output of zero. Where another constraint we have to realize about the A is that it's limited by our VCC. So actually this is between negative VCC A and positive VCC. And the reason for this is because when you're using an amplifier, the gain has to come from somewhere. Energy is neither created nor destroyed, it's just transferred. So that means that there's, an, there's a gain A here that is extremely big, but it's pulling power or current from these VCCs, right? So it's limited by these voltage sources at the terminals. So now what I will do is I'm going to analyze two circuits. I'm going to analyze a non-inverting op amp, and I'm going to analyze an inverting op amp, where for non-inverting, all that happens is my voltage input V, v source is connected to the positive terminal of my op amp, and I feed back the negative input to, um, I feed back the output to the negative input of my op amp. So essentially, if you consider that this is VS, so that means VP is equals to VS, and we said that VN is equals to VP, so this is also equals to VS, and as a result, this is equals to VN is equals to VP is equals to VS. If I have a resistor here, R1, and another resistor here, R2, if you were to do, if you were to consider a voltage divider equation, so this is V out, 
R1, R2, and this here is Vs, then you could write that Vs is equals to R1, uh, sorry, R2 over, so this is R2, over R1 plus R2 times VO. And we like to write these in terms of the gain. So the gain G is equals to V out over VS, which in this case, if I divide VS over, I would get R1 plus R2 over R2. So this is the gain of this circuit. So now what we can say is that we can draw a block diagram and say that if you give me a VS of voltage um, uh, input source, so like imagine it's a pressure sensor that's changing a voltage using a Wheatstone bridge, this, I'm gonna pass it through my amplifier G is equals to R1 plus R2 over R2. And this is going to amplify it. So V out is going to be G times Vs. Again, this G is bigger than 1, right? A way to see that is... A way to see that is imagine if R1... Imagine if R1 is equals to 1 and R2 is equals to 1 1k and R2 is equals to 2k then and Vs is equals to 1 volt then VO will be equals to 3k over 2k times uh, 1 volt which then that means that V is equals to 1.5 volts. All right, so I've, I've amplified this signal by one, uh, uh, to 1.5 from one volt. And as you can see, it's non-inverting. So that means that it's not changing values so, or, or sig signs. So this is a positive, right? And this is also a positive. So let's go ahead and now talk about the inverting amplifier. And again, the inverting amplifier says that I'm going to feed back my, my output, again, to my negative terminal. But instead of connecting the, the source to the positive, I'm connecting the source to the negative. So Vs, this is R1, and this is R2. And we consider that this is grounded. So now, we want to consider, we want to find V out over Vs. We first start off by saying that Vp is equal to zero because it's connected to ground. Vn is equals to Vp is equals to zero, right? If we were to do a nodal analysis here at Vn, we could say Vn minus Vs over R1 plus, so that, that's the current going this direction, plus the current going this direction, which is Vn minus Vo over R2 is equals to zero. We consider that Vn is zero, this is zero. So essentially Vs over R1 is equals to negative Vo over R2. Or again, um, let's write it in terms of Vo. So Vo is equals to negative R2 over R1 Vs. And again, that G, which is equal to VO over Vs, is equal to negative R2 over R1. 
So in this situation, if my feedback, which that's what R2 is called, this is also equals to RF. If my feedback, let's say, is uh, R2 is equals to 2K, R1 is equals to 1K, and Vs is equals to 1 volt. If you give me a voltage here of 1 volt, I would say that I would put it through this block diagram. So G is equals to negative R2 over R1. This is uh, 1 volt. This equals to Vs. Then V out will be equals to negative 1 over, uh, sorry, negative 2 over 1 times 1. So this is K, K, which is equals to negative 2 volts. This is volts. So essentially, I've amplified the signal, right, from 1 volt to 2 volt, and I've also changed the, 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 um, the, the sign, right? I've gone from positive to a negative. And that's why it's called an inverting amplifier. It inverts the input. Whereas here, we don't invert the input. So I hope these two make sense. Um, I wanted to keep it as a short video. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know in the comment sections below. And also, uh, as a quick question, what else can you make with an op-amp circuit, right? So in the comment section below, I want you to list five things you can make with a uh, op-amp circuit. If you like the video, please like it, share it, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. Have a wonderful day.